Hey everyone, this is Caitlin. And this is Lacey. And Silas. And this is Women in the Trailer Industry. Okay. Um, today we're going to talk about, you know, your feelings when you feel like you're not enough and then when you feel like you're not available enough. Um, Lacey, you had the most obviously recent experience yeah. with this, trying to be all the things with all the people. And just kind of what I want to start off with saying is that overall, everyone is enough. Yeah. Um, and your worth as an individual does not equate to basically what you can get done in a day. Um, so today we're just going to dive into that and right. then see where we land. Yeah. So, I mean, I think... Um, the pressure is real and it, and it can be felt. Um, but also I think it's important to start with too, that you're so much more self-critical of yourself. Self-critical critical is being critical of yourself. So, um, <laughs> yeah, let's just talk around that. But, um, you're, you're going to be more self-critical and you're going to look into things more because of the standards that you set for yourself. Yeah. And so you're always going to be a little bit harder on yourself when it comes to that. And so you may actually look into it more than what you should, yeah. you know? And so I think for me, it's important, um, to always remember to get feedback from your team. Yeah. Um, what, what is your talk to your like communicate? I think uh -huh. communication is key. Um, talking to your team, seeing like, is there, what are, what are their needs? What are, what are they lacking from you? Yeah. Um, and let them be honest with you about that. But then that gives you a chance to also be honest with, okay, yeah. but here's some resources that you can use whenever, if I'm not available to try to equip them with the right things too, to yeah. be able to help. Yeah. And I definitely for our, um, kind of scenario we have going on here is that, you know, when someone's not available or they're yeah. not in their seat, that people just ask whoever, and then it just kind of gets chaotic because, I mean, questions are coming from everywhere, and then people yeah. aren't updated, and people don't know. And, you know, I, I think that conversation, like you said, and that feedback is good. You know, for one, have the conversation, what more do you want from me? Right. Um, and then two, say, I can give you those things, but I can give them to you in this, this scenario, yeah. you know, and then I really need you to wait on me for those things for X, Y, and Z, unless it's urgent or demanding at that very moment. Um, one thing, you know, I've noticed after you had that conversation is like, people will wait. Yeah. They've waited more. Um, and I really don't know if they're good with it or not, but I mean, it's just kind of how it is too. Mm -hmm. And as we are creating these boundaries and stuff, um, it, it, you kind of, you can feel disconnected, but as long as you're delivering everyone's needs, right. then I think everybody would be good in the end. You know? And I think it does take a while for, you know, the tide to kind of change or the expectation to kind of change where, mm -hmm. um, it may, they may not like it that they have to wait a little bit longer to get their answer and not right then. But over time, what they're going to realize is what, how, is how your response time is. Um, and they can trust that. Right. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, over time, they're going to realize that, yeah, they had to wait 30 more minutes, but that day they're going to get their answer or within the two hour window, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like they're not going to be put off for three days because you yourself have to take it seriously and know that like, yes, while you're asking them to wait, you do need to come back to that stuff and give them the answer that they're looking for or mm -hmm. the resources to help them answer the stuff themselves. Yeah. And I think, you know, here we have pretty flexible work environment oh, yeah. where it's like, if you need something urgent, slack me, text me, do right. what you need to do. I can answer your request. Mm -hmm. I just can't really physically be in the seat because of all these various reasons. Yeah. But, you know, just getting that through people's heads, still having to repeat yourself that seven times, a hundred times, yes. whatever that is, and just really reinforcing that you are available for them, but it may be in a different way, yeah. whether it be providing those resources that they need or giving them the answers when you are available. So. Yeah, and I think it's just, it truly just to come back to what you said earlier, know that you are enough, first of all. If you're doing a good job and you know that you're doing a good job and you're giving 100% every day, it doesn't matter what seat you're sitting in, mm -hmm. know that you are doing your job and you're doing it good. Um, and if you're confident in that, then you're then you're confident in saying, I, I will get to that, but give me just a little bit of time mm -hmm. and knowing that you're going to come back to that. So I feel like that's just where you need to start. If you're feeling that way, feel 
start with your own inner um, assessment of yourself, yeah. really. And it really, it's not just leaders, but everybody, yeah, you know, who has felt like they aren't doing enough. But, you know, to them, they would feel like they're, he's headbutting you. Yes, yes that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they feel like they're giving their 110%, but when they talk to you, you, may, you know, you may not be giving them that full um, acknowledgement mm-hmm. of that 110%. So they would have those feelings as well. And it's just really, like you said, do the self-assessment. Are you giving your 110%? I mean, I come into work, I feel like there's always things I can improve on. And so yeah. no one's, no one's ever at 110% right. because we're all trying to improve. But as long as you're Striving putting in the it. effort yeah. and getting that done each day, I, I th- personally think everybody's moving in the right direction to get that done for sure and I think too um we've talked about it a lot um but we'll just hit on again because you know seven times or a hundred times keep saying it but processes that's why that's why we put those into effect and that's why we do write those up and have those because that is your resource to give to your um team to help them be equipped with whatever the nine times out of ten the answer is in that process if you have a good process. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I feel like that's very important too. Um, and then time management. So everybody needs their own time management and that's important to self-assess too. Like um, if I'm not feeling like I'm doing enough or I'm not enough or I'm not available enough, how can I be? And what does my time look like in that structure? Yeah. So. I read something the other day um, on the time management piece and it was like, well, when you say um, – I don't have time for something, um, which I'm thinking of all the things on my to-do yeah. list and, and what order they go in. And it was like, well, phrase it in. Well, that's not a priority right now. And so that one kind of hurt oh. me because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, these are all priorities. I just don't have time to get them all done. But um, the best example of this is like, if you're wanting to work out, but you never do, and you're saying you don't have time, mm-hmm. Well, if you rephrase that to say, well, that's not a priority, you may give that a different perspective. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um, so I don't even know where I was going with that, but on the time management piece, well, like I mean, what is a priority and then what isn't a priority yeah. and what you need to get done. And that's that was, for me, super hard to first realize um, with my own time management was, like you, I think everything is a priority, right? And it is. Yeah. all Everything is a priority, but what is highest priority? That was hardest for me to... Uh, identify is like what is highest priority because then you have to go down your whole list it all has to get done yeah but deciding what's most important right now that that was hard for me to first learn and and so it takes a while for you to figure out because then you're having to assess like um what those tasks affect yeah what is the outcome of that and so you're having to assess like the whole picture and it's hard. It's hard to think like, well, if, especially if you have things that you're working on for several different departments, because that's priority for each department. Mm-hmm. So what, you know, in yeah. our, in our business, like with most business, we're focused on revenue and profit. So for me, that has to be my number one priority every single time. Mm-hmm. And that might mean that my other departments, you know, whether it's media, whether it's, um, a sales meeting or whatever that might be, that might have to wait a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yes. And so particularly for me over the past three months, what I've noticed is bad word alert, but delegate that shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> once we started hiring new employees and kind of getting them on boarded, you know, you always think when you hire someone, you're going to have to go through all the training and then dread it, kind that's of. a whole like, <laughs> yeah. well, I'll just get it done faster myself. Yes. But at the end of the day, you don't. And then when that person is trained and if they're a pretty good go-getter and mm-hmm. they got the basics of what they need to do down and you can just give it to them and they can figure it out, it's like the light bulb oh went gosh. off. Because yes. You're like uh, um, weight lifted off your shoulders. Yes. So I, I think that's an important part of it. Um, and if you can be an advocate for getting that extra person Um, if you are kind of in that position where everything's a priority, Mm -hmm. I think in our last meeting, um, if everything's important, nothing's important. So, um, if everything becomes a priority, then we need to figure out who we can give it to, you know, or how we can release that control. And I mean, honestly, hiring people that can help you and that are skilled at a certain aspect of whatever that is that you're working on is better anyways, because they're going to do it more thoroughly. They're Mm going to, you know, not that we do things and cut corners, but 
it's just, it's so, it's like a breath, breath of fresh air to hand it off and know that it's going to be done so good mm-hmm. because they have the time to put in. You don't necessarily have the time to put yeah, in. Yeah, and know. they can focus on it 100% yes. instead of 5% here, here, yes. here, 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 and here. Um, so, yeah, definitely think an extra person um, if you have the ability to get that, mm-hmm. if you have so much on your plate to get that done and you for don't sure. have enough resources to give everybody yeah. your own time resources. Yeah, for sure. No, so. I totally agree. Cool. Well, just to recap, you know, you are enough. Yes. Um, and if you're feeling that you aren't, really do a self-assessment. One, are you giving it a, your all? Right. Or are you just thinking you're giving it your all? You know, are you really? And if you are, then lay out just time management, processes, delegation, anything you can do to um, get yourself back on track. Um, and maybe you're not even off track. You're just self thinking you're off track. Yeah. Right. Um, and then talk to those people you need to talk to and say, okay, what are your needs? And then how can I deliver on those? Yep. And in that set boundaries within it so that it's clear for everybody, but yeah, cool. Well, that's a wrap today. Be sure to join us in August at NATDA. Yes. Um, we'll be in Nashville this year. We'll have the women in the trailer industry booth along with full sin and Juan Hernandez, we are taking people um, to, so if you want to be on our podcast, um, reach out to us. You can reach out to us at um, Caitlin at the Trailer Parts Outlet. That's C-A-I-T-L-I-N or Lacey, L-A-C-E-Y at the Trailer Parts Outlet. And we can definitely get you on the books and schedule you out. We, you know, it's a good resource to be able to talk about your company, what you do. Um, we just, no pressure. We just kind of like have a conversation and we really enjoy learning everybody in the, or meeting everybody in the industry and learning what you do, what you can offer so that we can share in this business. Yep. And we have some exciting things coming like a women in the trailer industry, LinkedIn page. Yep. The women in the trailer industry committee, um, that NATDA will be, Uh, producing soon and then we'll just see y'all there so be sure to like subscribe follow anywhere you listen to your podcast oh and we have um two new places that we have our podcast now um scarlet help me out what are those two new places fail no it's um spotify is running them now and um Two new places, but I'll have to put it, we'll have to put it in the comments. So look in the comments. I'll make sure Kiefer adds it and on the screen. Yeah. Um, But yes, follow us anywhere. And then don't forget to follow uh, Juan with Full Send. Perfect. Well, we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.